Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Dominic and on my channel we talk about AI images, AI influencers and everything else of importance in the AI image space. In today's video I want to walk you through a whole tutorial about AI product placement. I want to show you how you can take a photo of a real model wearing real clothing and then change the model however you want and also the background so that you can basically make any model where you're closing. Stick around until the end because if you really understand this method you can use it for so many cases and you can even make money with it. With that being said let's jump over to my screen. As you can see here on the example image the goal of today is to keep the same leggings in both images but to change the model and also the background. This is very powerful and useful especially if you want to sell products and you don't want to pay real models for presenting your closing. This gives you a lot of opportunity and in this tutorial I will show you how you can do that. I know there are already applications out there that also allow to take fashion and then make digital models wear this fashion but in my opinion these applications are most of the time not really good because they change the complete look of the fashion and the fashion just looks kind of similar. But with the method I show you you can keep all the details because we won't change the fashion piece. We just create the model and the background around it and this will increase the realism a lot. And now I want to show you all the steps you have to follow to make this happen. And the process looks like this. We start with an input image, then we change the model, then we use a mask to change the background, then we do some error fixing and we change also the rest of the background. But no worries, I will show you all the steps in detail now and of course also which tools we need. The main tool I use is Focus, which is running with Stable Diffusion and I use that tool to create the model and the background and so on. So this is basically my AI image tool. And I also use an image manipulation tool called GIMP, which is completely for free, but it's still doing the job. And of course, you could also use any other image manipulation program. If you have Photoshop or something similar, this is even easier, but it also works completely for free. No worries, almost everything is done with focus. I just use image manipulation to fix some little errors every now and then. Good, let's jump right into it and start with step number one. And in step number one, we want to create the model and keep as much as possible from the original image. So I only mask the area what I want to change. In this case, the face, the head and the upper body of the model because the leggings and the shoes should stay the same more or less. I also keep the hands. This is a huge advantage because as you know, Stable Diffusion has its problems with drawing hands and if we can keep them like this, this is perfect. So in the first step, I go to focus, I mask this area use the in-painting default mode and the prompt like here, a hyper-realistic image of a 24-year-old Italian model, beautiful face, brown hair, professional quality 4K. And then I hit enter and I get an image like that. You see everything stayed the same, but now the model is wearing a different bra and also the face is completely different. If we compare it, it's a completely different model. And then in the next step, I create a mask to change the background. And you see what I mean with that up here. A mask is basically like a negative image and everything which is white in the mask will be changed later and everything which is black will stay the same. So now, as you can see, I want to conserve the floor and also the complete model, but everything which is white will be changed so the background will be changed. I try to keep also parts of the background because in my opinion, this will increase the realism because then the AI still knows how we want the light to be shining on the model and onto the floor. And in my opinion, this works just fine. Of course, you could also change the complete background in one go, but in my opinion, it works a little bit better if you keep at least some parts of the background. When you did that, you enter a prompt like gym or whatever background you want in focus 
and then you create the new background. As you can see, now we have the same model, but a different background. This time it's the gym background. And then I use exactly the same mask again, and this time I use a different mode in focus, the improve detail mode. And I just apply the same mask, but this time I increase the quality of the background. So I just use the same prompt, for example, more than gym background, and I write something like 4K high quality and so on, and I just run it again, and then the quality of the background is increased. I try to show this here. You see the model is still the same, but the background is changed a little bit. For example, here we see a difference and also the ball here looks a little bit different and also the floor. In my opinion, now everything looks a little bit cleaner and this was exactly the goal of that step. And I also recommend you to do that because in the end of the day, we want as much quality as possible. And if you pay close attention, this really helps a lot because here we have a little rubbish lying around. Also here, this looks a little bit strange. And now in the new image, everything looks nice and clean. Good, then we come to step number four. And now it's time to analyze the image. Have a close look and then mask all the unsharp border areas and increase the quality. And you can do this with improve detail mode in the in painting section of focus. And then you just mask these areas and you use a prompt like sharp edges or high quality 4K resolution and so on. This will increase just the sharpness of the edges and make the whole image look more professional. If you have bigger arrows, you can correct them with image manipulation, in my case, GIMP. And how you do that, I will show you in a little example. Good, we are now in the image manipulation program GIMP, which is completely free. And I want to show you how you can fix bigger errors with that program. And the first step is to open the image two times, and then you zoom in a lot, and you detect error areas. For example, here, we have an ugly detail. Then you can take that lasso and you just go around the silhouette of that leggings. And then you just mask the area, which is a little bit ugly, something like that. Then you go to the second image you opened, which is the same, but in a different tab. And then you just make a little copy of that area with control C, you make a copy, you go back and then you select edit, paste into selection. And as you can see, now we have this piece pasted in here and we can just shove this thing in and then we can make this ugly detail disappear. Then I confirm with the green button, select none. And as you can see, now this looks way better clear and sharp. And you can do this with the whole image. I will show you another part. For example, down here, this also looks a little bit ugly. So I just take the lasso and I go around the silhouette of the leg a little bit like this. And then I go up again. Don't mask too much here, just a little bit. Close it, then we go back to the other image. And in this case, let me check again which leg we are talking about. All right, it's the right leg. In this case, we need a piece of the right leg, something like that. We make a copy, edit, paste into selection. And as you can see again, now here's the original part. And then we can just move this a little bit inwards. And then the leg will look so much better. Confirm with the green button, select none, that's it. Of course, now this is a little bit ugly, but you can just go back to focus, mask this whole area, redraw it again with improved detail, and then this looks absolutely fantastic. But you see the border gets way sharper like this, and every now and then you just have to fix some little errors like this also here and then the final image will look really, really good. When you're done with all this error fixing, 
you should also take care of the face. As you can see here, I also masked it in focus and then I use a prompt like beautiful model face, the improve detail mode and afterwards the model face looks perfect. In this comparison, you see the image before and after the arrow fixing. You see now the borders are way sharper because I just took care of all these ugly arrows. Also in this area you see I took care of that rubbish in the background and now it looks just way better. And of course I also improved the quality of the face. As you can see now the model looks really really good. And in focus you can super easily do that by just masking the face and then typing into the improved detail mode beautiful model face and then you get a way better quality of the face. Good, here I zoomed in once again to show you the difference if you do this editing I showed you in GIMP. Because when you work with a mask, the AI will also damage a little bit the borders of the model. But with image manipulation, you can take care of that and afterward it looks just fantastic. So I really recommend you to also combine image manipulation with focus or stable diffusion or any other AI tool you use because this will increase the quality a lot. Good, now we are in step number five and in this step it's time to create another mask if needed because now I want to get rid of that piece of the floor. I have to admit that this was just an error of mine. I just created the image like this and in my opinion this looked fantastic but then the person I created that image for told me that this looks ridiculous and it doesn't make too much sense. So I also changed the floor. Of course, you could do this also from the beginning, but as I told you, it also makes sense to keep at least parts of the background in the beginning to show the AI how the actual light is shining onto the model. So it actually makes sense to also work in a two-step process, but it would of course be more efficient to change the background totally from the beginning. Good, so I used that mask as you already learned it earlier. Now the white area will be changed. In this case, the white part of the floor and then I completed the black gym floor. And afterwards it looked like this with this nice looking gym floor and then I just did some more error fixing and I improved some details and here we see the final result after the last little error fixings and I think we can agree that this looks quite nice. We still have the original leggings and also a similar pose but the model looks completely different and we also have a complete new background. And this is the power of this method that we can keep original parts like closing or any other product but we can combine it with digital models and digital backgrounds. And this is a huge opportunity for every person in e-commerce or retail because getting product images can be very expensive and time consuming and with that method you can just do this fully digital. And now enjoy trying this method for yourself. Thanks a lot for sticking around until the end. I hope you enjoyed this video and you got a lot of value out of it. If so, make sure to leave a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and let me know in the comments if you already tested out this method or if this is something you would consider for your product or service. I hope we see each other in the next video. Take care and goodbye.